Now in this question then, it's a typical moments question and we've got to draw a diagram. So I'll take you through drawing this sketch for the plank here. We've got a plank P R we're told. It's of length eight meters and we've got to model it as a uniform plank. So it rests, we're told, on supports, one at P, so we'll just mark that in as a support there at P, and another one at Q, which is two meters from R. So we'll have another support here, call it Q, and this length would be two meters. Now because it's a uniform plank, and we're told its mass is 20 kilograms, its weight will act in the middle. So it'll act downwards and its weight will be 20 G Newtons. So that means that because it's four meters in from either side here, then this distance here must be two meters. And obviously this is four meters. We're also told though that there's a child of mass 40 kilograms stands on the plank at a distance two meters from P. So if we model that child as a particle, then the weight of that child is going to act downwards here, two meters away from P. The mass was 40 kilograms, so there'll be a weight here, force downwards of 40 G Newtons. And we can now mark this in as two meters away from P. That leaves us with another two meters in here. So we can fill in these intervals, if you like, with those distances. Also, we're told that there is a block of mass m kilograms that's placed at R. So that's going to also provide a force downwards of mg newtons. Now, if this plank is held in equilibrium on these supports, there's going to be a contact force coming upwards from the supports. Now, normally I'd call them reactions RP and RQ, but in this particular question, those two reactions are exactly the same. So I'm just going to mark them in as R Newtons there and R Newtons there. No need for any subscripts like RP, RQ. Now, what we need to do in this question then, we're told, is to work out in the first part what the magnitude of the f force exerted at P is. In other words, to find out what R is. And then in the next part, to work out what the mass M is. Well, to do this first part, to get R, what I'd want to do is take moments. Moments about R. In fact, you can take moments about any point you like, but really the best place in this problem is to take it about R because it means that M will not enter into our equation. Because when it comes to taking moments, this force M, or MG I should say, passes through the point that we're going to take moments about, so it'll have no effect in the turning. So it won't enter the equation. So let's start off then in A, part one then, by taking moments about R. And I would illustrate that by using this notation. And we need to set up a positive sense. And it's up to you which way round you take, whether you take clockwise or anti-clockwise as long as you stick to the sign convention. Now I'm going to take clockwise as being positive. So if I take clockwise as positive, and I take that purely because I can see that R is going to give us a clockwise moment and it will keep the equation positive or that part of the equation positive. But that's up to you. So do remember then when it comes to taking moments about a point it is your force times your distance to that point. And I like to think of this as a ruler, okay, this plank here. And I think of just holding it down at the end here. We'll pretend then that this is like R, okay? And if you take a ruler 
all you've got to do is just push on it in the direction of the forces. So for instance, if I'm looking at the moment of R, if you were to push in this direction here, then the ruler is going to turn in a clockwise sense about R. So when it comes to taking the moment of this force uh, acting at P, it's going to be plus R times the distance to R, R times 8. So we'll start off then by saying R times 8, the force here times the distance to R, and it's going to be a positive value. Now we go on to say this R here, if I was to push at this point, let's just rub that out, if I was to push at this point and hold the ruler down at this point, it would want to turn round in a clockwise sense. So we've got plus, well I should change that colour, okay, we should have that as R times 2, alright. Now we come on to this force here, think of pushing now in this direction. If you hold the ruler down at this point, the ruler would want to turn anti-clockwise in a negative sense to what we've got here. So we can expect to write minus, and then we've got the force here, 40g multiplied by the distance back to r, which is going to be 6 meters, so 40g times 6. Similarly, if we push with the 20g in this direction, it too is going to be turning in the anti-clockwise direction, so it will be minus, minus 20g times this distance back to r, which would be 4, 4 metres. As for this force here, it has no effect. If we were to push down through here, holding the ruler at r, you couldn't turn it because it passes through the point where we're trying to take moments about. So this would be our resultant moment, but the plank is in equilibrium, so it must equal zero. There is no resultant turning effect. So all we've got to do now is just solve this equation for r. So we've got 8r plus 2r here, which is going to be 10r, so we therefore have 10r, and then we've got minus 40g times 6 and minus 20g times 4. So if you work that out, that comes to minus 320g. And that equals 0. So if we add 320g to both sides, you've got 10r equals 320g. And you could divide through by 10 and you get r equals 32g newtons. Or if we now take g as 9.8, then you therefore have r equals 313.6 newtons. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then how to go about part uh, 1 of A. Okay?